My name is Grace and welcome back to Gravecraft. Can you, can you not? We can all agree that the Resident Evil 4 remake was absolutely fantastic. They did leave out one of my favorite parts though. But that's okay. I just remember that this game scared me so much as a teen and it carried over and scared me so much as an adult. So of course, naturally, I want to take something spooky that scared me in the game and bring it into real life. And if you've been watching this channel or know me at all, you probably have guessed well, also, if you've seen the thumbnail, you've probably guessed that I'm going to be making the Armadora from Resident Evil 4 Remake. <sighs> this build is going to be a little different. I am not going to be making a full armor wearable costume. Instead, I'm going to be making a bust. I really just wanted to make this because I wanted a cool new display piece in my house and also just wanted a cool new display piece for my table at Gold Matsuri. This is my booth! I was so excited to be invited as a guest and thank you so much to everybody who stopped by and talked and listened to me word vomit about glue. <laughs> and before we start, thank you so much for joining me today and watching this video. Now, let's go make some stuff. We begin our crafting journey by finding an elite knight helm on Pepakura. Okay, so this looks like a lot and it was a lot, but we're only gonna be using a few pieces. So using this little gyro cutter, I think is what it's called. I'm just cutting out my pattern pieces. It's a really neat tool if you need to cut a lot of different shapes. So the Pepakura part was wacky and I did not record it, sorry. <laughs> Here are our finished pattern pieces and let's go ahead and cut them out of craft form. Also, here's some ASMR. It's the biggest foam roll I've ever seen in my entire life. I mean, check out how large this foam roll is. It is a whopping 35 by 59 inches. That's huge. This is a way bigger foam roll than anything I've ever worked with before. And it's important to have a big roll so that way we can make more seamless designs. Just like I can now seamlessly move into talking about how I am now a sponsored builder with the foamery. I am beyond excited and I could not be more thankful for them. So thank you so much. I am really looking forward to working with your foam for this build. I have left their links down in the description below. So make sure to go and check them out. And then we just take our patterns and transfer them over onto our foamery foam and cut them out. Everything has been cut out, so now we are going to use barge to stick it all together. Okay, new day. We are ready to pattern our faceplate. Yeah, I had no idea what I was doing here and it was wrong. So we make a second one. It was wrong too. So we move over to the third and I'm feeling really good about this one because we are able to draft a little bit in 3D and there we go. From the sound of it, it seems like Ooh! Our patterns are working. So we move over, cut it out of craft foam, glue it together, attach the little fin piece, and then attach the whole faceplate to the base of the helmet. All right. I 
am done for the day. I can no longer glue things to things. I have glued enough. I am really happy with the way that it's coming out. Nope, still wrong. So yesterday I came out here and immediately within like the first second of looking at it, I hated it. I hated the way it looked. I'm absolutely not a perfectionist, but I still want stuff to look good and I still want things to be up to my standards and it just wasn't. So what I did was I completely pulled it apart and I mean like legit pulled it apart and drafted some new patterns that we are going to try today. Okay, I am feeling 100% better about this one. Let's get it cut out and glued together. Let's go. That's the shape I was looking for. Yeah, yes, 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 yes. I need to extend the helmet, but that shouldn't be a problem. So with extending the helmet, I know now looking back that I totally should have just remade the base completely, but I didn't. Spoiler alert. So let's just keep moving forward by cutting out the eye holes, attaching our little fin to the faceplate and to the base helmet. <sighs> now it wouldn't be one of my builds without the use of quick seal. I am using it to fill in the seams of her helmet and I'm just applying a little bit of water to make it more brushable and I'm also adding a little bit of texture using a sponge. So the head details are going to be really fun to make because I get to work with the Foamery's one millimeter craft foam. Yes, one millimeter craft foam does actually exist and it is awesome, especially in this application where two millimeter was a little bit too thick. Then using our etching pen, we scratch in some lines so that way we can make sure our details are all lined up. I don't know why that scared me so bad. Now that our details are glued on, I'm going in with this leather thread and I am making teeny tiny little braids, the tiniest braids I've ever seen. And I am attaching them using super glue. And now the rest is pretty self-explanatory, so I am just going to be quiet. To pattern the neck piece, I am just using the good old fashioned aluminum foil and masking tape method. You just build up aluminum foil for your base and apply masking tape on top and then draw on your pattern. It's simple, it's cheap, and it always works. Using our barge, we then just attach the neck piece to the base. All right. The patterning is done and our base is done. So now I get to move over to doing more details and finishing up our helmet.
After a while of attaching pearls, we can move over and punch little holes in our helmet with a little leather hole punch. And I now think it's time for a much needed snack break. I do believe we are effectively detailed. Off camera, I added a bunch of the scroll work and stuff and I'm now covered in gold glitter. And I need to wait for it to dry overnight so that way tomorrow we can come back in with more quick seal, finish hiding some gaps and some seams and giving it just a little bit of texture. Then being very careful on the scroll work and the pearl areas, we make sure that everything is sanded down and as smooth as possible. Then after like 70 layers of Plasti Dip, we can do a little bit of battle damage. Now this is the part I was most looking forward to. So we are going to move over to painting the helmet later, but in the meantime, what we can do is we can go ahead and get the foundation done. So this is going to be the part from like the neck up where it has the eyeball and all the tentacles and all like the fleshy goopy bits. It's gonna be so nasty. I cannot wait to get started. What I'm gonna do, got a little styrofoam base here. I've got a PVC pipe that I'm going to shove in so I can put the helmet on it. And we're just going to start slowly building up with some wires, some great stuff. And then once that cures, we'll move in with foam clay and details. So let's get going. I just shoved in some wires onto the styrofoam ball, making sure that they somewhat lined up to the reference image. Now with some aluminum foil, I'm just going to be bulking up our wires. Then we give it a layer of masking tape and we start going in with our great stuff. Back in the old days of cosplay, I, <laughs> I sound like a grandmother, back in my day, <laughs> we used great stuff to be the base of most of our props instead of like EVA foam or XPS foam. And I feel like it's not utilized as much as it used to be. Always wear gloves and protective eyewear. Whoops. This coming from a person who actually takes safety and PPE very seriously. <laughs> Please wear gloves and wear eye protection when working with this stuff. But back to what I was saying, it's a really cool way to get bulk really inexpensively and quickly, but also you can give some really interesting textures to it if you know how to manipulate it. Now, as we wait for the spray insulation to dry, we are going to be moving over to the eye. Oh, I did not mean for that to rhyme when I started, but I could not stop. <laughs> We're just going to be cutting out a couple circles and using this HDC coin. Thank you, Tim. We are going to be cutting out a little relief. I'm basically just building up foam underneath the foam clay so that way we use less foam clay. Then using the Foamery's White Magic Foam Clay, we just cover that circle base thing. It turns out if you sand black craft foam and don't wash your hands before using white foam clay, it looks like vanilla bean ice cream. 
Then I just prime it with Plessy Dip and spray it this tan color, then yellow, and then spritz on orange from a little further away. You get this really cool splatter paint effect. Now again, with our perfect child quick seal, we add a little bit of iris texture. Oh, and it looks like it's time for another snack break. Next steps for eyeball, we are going to be using some UV resin. And if you are in the cosplay community, you probably know a little bit about uni glitter. Glitter in a monster eyeball? Um, yes. We are allowed to like glitter every now and then. I add enough UV resin to fill the little iris and I use a lighter to pop the bubbles. Then I'm using uni glitter to add a few glitter catch lights. Then I smooth it all out with a paintbrush. Then harden the resin with a UV flashlight for about a minute. Now I learned this trick from watching a Madame Tussauds how they make wax characters. And the character they were making at the time was Justin Bieber. So it was kind of a long time ago, but I am now finally able to apply that technique here. Using UV resin and those silk red threads, we can mimic the veins in an eyeball. What a wacky and nifty little technique. Then to finish it up, we apply like four more layers of UV resin and we're done with our eyeball. Okay. Oh. I have two different foam clays. I have the black magic and the white magic from the foamery. And we are going to see how far the white one stretches us and then move on from there. So it's pretty simple, we just wrap the white foam clay around the tentacles and we use water to smooth it out. Hey, this is a bit too phallic. I'm not recording this. Yeah, I have the sense of humor of like a 12 year old little boy. So I had to do all of the smoothing off camera because it was really inappropriate looking. <laughs> Then using my heat gun, I can add some really cool textures to this foam clay. And I was just really kind of playing around and yeah, I got some really cool textures. Thank you, James Get Spooky, for this technique. I did run out of white magic, so I started using the black magic clay, and it behaved a little bit differently than the white clay, but honestly, they were both really great. 
I'll try to break it down. It seemed as though the white clay took the heat gun texture a lot easier, but the black clay took the sculpting a lot easier. I guess it just depends on what techniques you use and, and what application you're going to be using this foam clay. Overall, the foam clay worked really well and it didn't give me any issues. After the clay had dried, I go in with, of course, some more quick seal. <laughs> Can't stay away from that stuff. And for our final little last tentacles, we're going to be making them out of black warbler. Welcome to my backyard. Now that it's 90 degrees outside, let's go. After base painting it this light tan color, I'm just gonna be going in with my airbrush, building up the reds first. so nasty. I'm so happy. And then after red, we go in with blue. Then we use Spastic's Chrome Airbrush Paint for the helmet. All right, I am so thrilled with the way that this is coming out. The airbrushing, all the different colors, I just, so happy and so proud of myself. But I feel like it's lacking some depth a little bit. So what we're gonna be doing is we're going to be adding a little bit of black acrylic for a black wash. And then we're going to be going in with some dry brushing. Then I go in with oil paints and paint some veins blue and give some areas a little bit more saturation with some red oil paint. Then off camera, my husband made this little stand for me. Then I sanded and stained it. And now I believe we are done. was a challenging build. Not only just with the patterning and the building process, but I used so many different techniques and materials and the paint job. Thank you so much for giving me your time today and for watching. And a big thank you to the Fomery for sponsoring me and just us creators in general. I of course have left their links down in the description below, as well as my own to my Etsy page where I sell foam armor patterns. So go and check them out. Don't forget to like and subscribe so I can catch you all in the next video. And without further ado, let's finally take a look at our finished armadura. <laughs>